you have to believe in yourself, otherwise you're going to fail. And if you don't believe in yourself, nobody else is going to either. It's nice to have people around you push you and say, yeah, you can do this, but at the end of the day, if you don't want to do it, you're not going to go anywhere. You have to believe in it. Christian was a joy as a baby. He was a blessing. He loved his music. He just loved life. I had the CD, the Bee Gees, and he would be in the back seat with that high voice going, hee, 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 staying alive, staying alive. He always enjoyed just being happy. Christian started playing piano in second grade, and then as he progressed, one of his teachers said, okay, I don't want to have the 4-4 time. I don't want strict rhythms. I want you to take off and be Christian. You know, his passion has always been uh, surrounded by music. It always has been. I mean, he's an excellent student uh, and has always been that. I remember that his, his first B he ever made was, was when he was in SMU at, uh, down in Dallas. And he thought the end of the world had come by, that he had failed with something. And I told him how proud I was of him from a standpoint that, you know, it's, it's how you come back after you've been kicked in the teeth. And he did that, graduating in three and a half years as a triple major and two minors. poli sci public policy and economics, and I minored in international studies and European studies, and then they, and I was one class away from getting a history minor as well. And I said, well, triple minoring and triple majoring and triple minoring, that would just be excessive. <laughs> it's good that you said. You yeah, you know, I said, you know, I have to, you have you to limit yourself one. sometimes. <laughs> You know, it was just, okay, well, if I can do that, why not go for it? Why not make the most of the things that you're given? But that's, that's his drive. That's his internal drive. He's been that way in music all of his life. Well, here we go. I've been alive, I've been crazy. Christian, it's, he, said, he plans something out. And he says, I want to do this. And so he looks and he plans it. And then he, he gets in, in into the performance side, the preparation side. So he anticipates what's going to go right, what's going to go wrong, and adjusts accordingly. And then he goes out and performs it. And then if it needs to be tweaked, so be it. You know, what's the goal? What's the end goal? Where am I going? If all doors are shut, and he'll open all of them, Right? He will try to get through all of them. He's extremely determined given the subject matter to which he's engaged in. So a friend brought Christian to me and I listened to the songs and I heard something in Christian's voice. There was something there. I said, wow, with the right producer and the right songs, there could be something here. I reached out to Sal Oliveri, who is probably one of the best producers in Nashville, in my opinion. Also, he's great at developing new artists. And he came to the same conclusion. He's like, I think there's something there. Well, that was pretty. How do you guys feel? I can hit a couple spots. How are you, Pat? Good. Go for it. I've got one spot to check. I got two spots when you guys were in. Deb Henson said she had this artist she knew that she wanted me to listen to. And I get that a lot. You know, I get people sending me stuff weekly, maybe half a dozen times a week. So when I listened, his, you know, his previous work was rock, which I love. You know, I grew up on a lot of rock and roll. And I just heard that his ability to like really sing like a really wide range of notes, but have this power and grit that um, some people call gravel, whatever you want to call it. I told him yesterday as we were recording vocals, he was like, is that too much? And I said, man, you, you don't know how many people would kill to be able to sing like that. You know, it's such a cool sound. Most of my favorite singers throughout my life have that quality. That's the first thing that kind of caught my ear with him. I am a huge critic of myself. Like we're, we've just been recording um, for the past couple of hours and God, I can't even stand to listen to my own voice. And it's one of those things where I hear every single mistake. Um, and that's been that way since since I was little. Um, you know, going back to, I started playing piano in second grade and I would go back and dad would record on um, video cameras or whatever, the camcorders, um, my recitals. And 
I would go back and I would listen to those things and I would hear every single note that I missed. And some of them were more egregious than others. And, you know, listening to my own voice now, you know, I can hear every time I go pitchy, I can hear the consonants, the syllables that I don't enunciate correctly. And I suppose if you are satisfied with where you're at, you're not going to progress. And that that is an interesting, you know, road to go down and kind of philo philosophically as far as, you know, at what point are you content with how far you've come? And I am of the opinion that if you're, you know, not moving forward, then you're just, you know, treading water, you're pretty close to sinking. And you always have to keep going forward and pushing and proceeding on um, to see what the next um, great peak you can achieve is. And when you want to be an artist and someone says, hey, have you heard Christian Parker? They need to be able to know well, what's he sound like? Two sentences. One sentence you need to be able to say, oh, he's got, you know, cool gravelly voice. He's, he does this, he does that. I mean, pick any artist. Adele, you can describe her in a sentence or two because she's defined who she is as an artist. And that's really the key. What I'm looking for is just some kind of spark, you know, that identifiable quality that helps them be noticed, right? So if you want to be noticed in a crowd, you can't just look like everybody else. You can't sound like everybody else. You can't be cloning someone else. You have to be authentic. And as much as there are very specific strategies that increase odds, there's no guarantees in this business. The only guarantee really is that if you do nothing, nothing happens. Well, Sal knows the way, you know, and Sal is a you know, very accomplished producer. He's got numerous number one, you know, tons of top 40, as well as country charts and gospel charts and, you know, all sorts of these things. It's like, I, yeah, I'm going to listen to him. I would be an idiot not to. And there are people who are older, wiser, more talented than you. And there will always be somebody who's older, wiser, more talented than you. So yeah, I'm going to listen to them. For Christian, um, you know, he's got a great team of people, which is a huge component. He's got incredible family support. His parents are awesome, um, really encouraging. They support him. I can't really overstate how important that is. And there are people that succeed that don't have it. But, man, it's a lot easier when you've got a good family behind you. Um, Deb Henson, who introduced us, is a brilliant marketing, you know, managerial mind. And so you've got that component, you know. You know, if you're the smartest guy in the room, you're doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happening here in Nashville as well. We have these absolutely tremendous artists that have come and played on these tracks. And I'm sitting here going, man, I'm unworthy of even sitting here and having these guys play on my tracks. I'm a little know-nothing. Nobody knows who I am. You know, I'm, I'm unproven in this world. And, and to just have these guys, you know, even be in the same room as these guys and then have them play on my music. Are you kidding me? You know, having these amazing tracks and these amazing musicians will make you want to be a better vocalist and it'll push you to do these things. Now I may not be there yet, but it's certainly a challenge and it's something to set your sights on and go for and drive towards. And it makes you go, yeah, I want to be worthy of these tracks. My goal with um, this new batch of songs is to do rock leaning country. So the main genre we're working in is country music. We have country songs, right? But we, we rock them out a little bit. He's got a great work ethic, like he doesn't back down. When I ask him, hey, man, I think you've got more in there. So is that you'll meet a girl that you never would have then you're all the way in? You know, it can get draining being in the booth and like repeating the same section over and over. But he hung in there with me the whole yeah. time. Full on grit, but this should have yeah. some oomph behind it. I was raised on Chevrolet secondhand smoke. The ones that have a slow build, you're not going to be belting in the first chorus like you might the last chorus but the songs like shotgun that are pretty big every time chorus one and two are identical except the last line okay. um so what we'll do is sing chorus one and then we'll just do the last line of course two because instead of shotgun shotgun it just goes up and sustain and honestly the the copy paste is advantageous for commercial music it's just what all the, all the big boys do too okay. work ethic you know, man, sometimes it's just the last man standing that wins. And so um, I see that in him. He's got 
you know, a, a serious backbone and his family's there for him. I think he's got a lot of potential. These are my walking boots. So I think it starts, you start with the end in mind and you kind of visualize in your mind what is the end result you're going for. Right. Clothe Johnny right, Cash, yeah. clothe the Beatles, yeah, yeah. clothe everybody. And now they're clothing me. You know, I think it's so important for an artist to have something that inspires them. And when the artist is inspired, the audience is inspired. And that's that relationship that we have to keep between artists and audience and that's when everybody feels love they feel inspired and that's music one of the really cool things about the process here is that actually when you get to sit down with Manuel he actually is just talking to you yeah. he creates something for you yeah. that screams you and then I've also something that I know a lot and I've seen a lot is that he actually likes to give people like a style Mm -hmm. yeah. Like their own style, bring out their yeah. own, you know, the artist inside of you. Yeah. And it's mm -hmm. supposed, it, you are an artist all the time. So you just are going to portray that even more with your outfit. Yeah. Because yeah. like at the end of the day, it's, it's, he brings out who you are. I want the best photo. And if the best photo is going to be you with a custom yeah. suit, then let's do that. Okay. Got just got to meet Manuel. Absolute master, you know, legend in Nashville. You know, the exclusive Olivier to everybody who's been everybody. And, uh, you know, feeling a little overwhelmed, but I mean, just really in awe, stunned at uh, how beautiful the clothes are and just kind of to be here. You know, it's a very humbling experience. I love helping new artists really like find their style and then just helping him become that. Helping people really nail their vision and their image. Because as we know in this industry, image is just as important as the music. He already had like a clear vision of who he wanted to be. You know, he sent me images of Hank Jr. that he loved and Waylon. So I just tried to pull inspiration off of his inspiration. And then meeting him, kind of meshing those together with also my creative aesthetic. And it's been great. He's super laid back. He's funny. He's very brave when it comes to his style. He's really fashion forward in the sense of wanting to keep the vintage style, but doing something new and fresh and bringing back like the rhinestone cowboy. I think it's really exciting. I think people are gonna love it. For the cover shoot, well, first of all, we got the jacket by Manuel, right? Like that's kind of where the inspiration starts, this incredible jacket. And then we build on top of that because we knew that we wanted this jacket for the cover shot. Today we're back in Nashville for a photo shoot, so it's so special to me to have a jacket made by Manuel. Oh man, that is gorgeous. I hope we got everything oh, yeah. on it. Yeah, no, that's gorgeous. Good lord. To me to have a jacket made by Manuel, one of the most legendary cloviers in all of country music, and that is for me, it's just so incredible. So once we knew that we were gonna have this beautiful jacket, I just kind of tried to envision what the scene would be that would best fit the jacket, best fit Christian, the music, the vibe. I just don't think there would be any other place other than the Dive Motel. It just fits this vintage vision so well. Oh, it's gonna look so good in here too. Oh, it's everything we thought it would be. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> I'm going to get on a stool, and you're just going to probably stand on the bed, and just so we can have this dope background. And then we're going to have like a beautiful shaft of light coming in. It's going to be cool and vintage and moody. Right. That's my vision for the actual cover. But then I also want to kind of move you around the room. You're getting a lot of macro on this? Or not macro, but... Yeah. Awesome. Yeah.
I'm right up on it. Maybe let's close that far left blind. Oh, nice. Brian making my dream come. Of course, that's four hundred, right? Do you want any more titties? Again? Did you contract that? Right there. Little grin. Ha ha ha. Gorgeous. Beautiful, right there. Yeah, oh, that's cool with the arm. Do you see 25, 30, 40 years in his future? Oh man, well, I, I sure hope so. Um, you know, he's a, he's a bright guy. He's he's got a good mind. Um, he obviously loves music. He's great at it. Uh, I mean, I want to help him do it. So, does he have the potential? Sure. Yeah, if he if he wants it to be his future, I think he can work at it and um, and do as good as anybody. I think that he's got the talent. I think that he has a great voice. I think the song that I heard today sounds really good. Um, you know, so if he sticks with it, I think his chance is as good as anyone else's. On your tombstone, there is live the year 19, you know, 24 to 1986, whatever. And in between, there's a dash. Live the dash, because that's where life happens. What's what's the ultimate goal? Oh, why well, you get discovered and, and people recognize you and they like your music, stuff like that. You know, I have no expectations that these things are gonna chart. I have no expectations that, you know, I'm gonna sell out thousand seat arenas or anything like that. You know, if all of this goes kaput, you, you just have to appreciate the moments you're given. And that comes in the form of friends and family and good music. I think as long as I come out of it thinking, yeah, that was a good piece of music we made and it's something I would want to listen to, well, then I think that you have to be happy with that. And I hope that what I put out is something that maybe speaks to somebody. Maybe they connect to it and they say, yeah, that's the way I'm feeling. And somebody's finally put it into lyrics, into a song, into something. So I hope they enjoy that. What's the miles on the mile on a one-way ride that you're never gonna see again? Well, you don't wanna know.